Okay, shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh Shai. It's another video. Hopefully it's edifying in the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. All praises and glory is due to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai for giving us this knowledge, this truth, this understanding. So I'm going to call this video, Believe Me for the Very Work's Sake. Believe Me for the Very Work's Sake. And that's a quote from the book of uh, uh, John, the 14th chapter. And it's something that Yahweh said to the non-believers. And we're going to read that scripture. And it just shows you, for Yahweh to make that statement, as a matter of fact, you know what? Let's just read it, all right? Let's start off the lesson with that scripture, right? Um... John 14 and 9, let's start there. It says, Yahweh Shai saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? Because Philip had asked Yahweh Shai, show us the father. His father as in Yahweh, right? He that seeth me have seen the father, and how sayest thou, show us the father? Now, was he saying that he is his father? Nope. Because... There are plenty of scriptures that prove that Yahweh Shai is not his father. You have the father and you have the son. And they are two separate entities. But what Yahweh Shai was saying was that he looks like his father. He's the split in image of his father. <coughs> Excuse me. His father being Yahweh. All right. So let's keep on reading. As a matter of fact, to uh, prove that, like I said, there's many scriptures that prove that the Heavenly Father and the Only Begotten Son are two separate entities. For instance, one of the titles of the Heavenly Father is the Ancient of Days. Do you know what that means? That means he doesn't have a beginning nor an end. Yet one of the titles of the Only Begotten Son is the Alpha and the Omega. Alpha is a Greek word that means beginning. So there's the separation. The Heavenly Father doesn't have a beginning or an end. And can we uh, explain that? Nope. That's way beyond our comprehension, okay? But the, the uh, son, his only begotten son, has a beginning. He was created by the father, Yahweh himself. That's why he has the title, the only begotten son, okay? He was the first spirit created. Now, if we go in the book of 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, this will prove there's a separate, that the Father and the Son are two separate entities. Let's just go right to the point. 1 Corinthians 11 and 3, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Yahweh Shai. So Yahweh Shai is our head, right? And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Yahweh Shai is Yahweh. Let's read that again in case you didn't catch that. 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. That's one of the many scriptures that prove there's the separation between the Father and the Son. They're two separate entities. They're one in mind. They're one in understanding. But they're separate entities. Okay? And this is one of the many scriptures that prove this. As it is written, prove all things, right? Well, here we go. 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Yahweh Shai. And the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Yahweh Shai is Yahweh, the Heavenly Father Himself, okay, who has no beginning and no end. So let that wrap around your mind. And, and by the way, who raised the only begotten Son out of the grave? Who raised Him? Did He raise Himself? Nope. The Father raised Him, the Heavenly Father Yahweh. One more scripture we can bring in to show the separation, two separate entities. Here's the, here's the son, Yahweh Shai, praying to his father. Now, would he pray to himself? <laughs> John 17 and 1. These words spake Yahweh Shai and lifted up his eyes to heaven. Now, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, who was he praying to? Who was he praying to? Who was Yahweh Shai praying to when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane? If they're the same entity, was he praying to himself? <laughs> See, people do not know or understand the scriptures, man. When they make statements like, uh, the Son of God is 
the Father, okay? Uh, some of them say that, uh, they, first of all, they call him Jesus Christ. That's number one where they're, they're wrong there. Number two, they say that Jesus Christ is God, meaning he is the most high. And they, they, they don't know how wrong, they, they don't know how much, they don't know how wrong they are, okay? John 17 and 1, these words spake Yahweh Shah and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, who is he talking to, himself? <laughs> Father, the hour has come, glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. So clearly there's a separation. This is Yahweh Shai praying to his father. Furthermore, when you had the transfiguration, and the phone had to chime on that one, right? When you had the transfiguration, right, a voice came out the chariot and said, this is my beloved son in whom, in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. That voice was the voice of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. You know, Yahweh Shai wasn't being a ventriloquist and, and projecting his voice, all right? So the point is well made. We can move on, right? So for Yahweh Shai to make the statement, this is the point I wanted to make, for Yahweh Shai to make the statement uh, that we're going to read, believe me, for the very work's sake, shows the importance of the works, all right? That's, that's the... Uh, the the uh, that's the lesson uh, that I want to bring out in the, in this video, the importance of the works. Okay, uh, John fourteen and nine. Yahweh Shai saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that have seen me have seen the Father, and that's why I had to go into all those scriptures to prove the separation between the Father and the Son in entity but they're the same in mind, all right? And how says thou, then show us the Father? Because everything Yahweh Shai learned, he learned it from his Father, okay? The knowledge that we have, which we got from Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai got it from his Father, okay? So it, 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 you know, it's like a chain of command type thing, you know? You start with the Father. We read it in First Corinthians 11 chapter. You start with the Father, then you work down to the Son, then you work down to the men that believe in the Son, okay? Um, Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. See? So, <laughs> more separation, all right? He doeth the works, okay? So, Yahweh has given credit to his Father, Yahweh. How powerful is that, right? Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Now, we couldn't do the works that we do if Yahweh Shai wasn't in us, which Yahweh Shai is in the Father. Okay, that's the chain of command that I talked about. We couldn't do the works that we do, learning these scriptures, going out and teaching them, breaking them down correctly. We couldn't do those works unless Yahweh Shai dwelt within us which Yahweh Shai dwells in the Father, because Yahweh Shai just said it. He said, believe in me, John 14 and 11, believe, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. And this was based upon the question Philip, Philip being one of the disciples, which became an apostle, that's based upon the question Philip asked Yahweh Shai, show us the Father. So basically, Yahweh Shai was telling Philip, don't worry about the Father. I represent the Father totally. The Father is in me. That's basically what Yahweh Shai was saying. Because truth be told, we ain't on no level to go before the Father, Yahweh. That's why there's a mediator. Is it not written? Let's get 1 Timothy 2, 2 and 5. We're on no level to go before the Father, man. Okay? They have, they, there's a, the Father set up a mediator. Okay? 1 Timothy, and, and the reason why I say we're on no level to go before the Father, because we became extremely wicked. All right, there was a time where the Father was dealing with us straight up, you know. And basically, there's always been a mediator, truth be told. Moses was a mediator. All right, so let's keep, let's keep reading. 1 Timothy 2 and 5, For there is one power and one mediator between the Heavenly Father and men. What kind of men? Israelite men, which are his people, right? The man, Yahweh Shai. All right, so Yahweh Shai is our mediator. Now, let's take a look at this word mediator. Let's define the word mediator. Mediator. It says a person 
who attempts to make people involved in a conflict come to an agreement, a go-between. And that's why one of the titles Yahweh Shai has is the Prince of Peace. All right? The many, among the many titles that Yahweh Shai has is the Prince of Peace. Check that out. That's, uh, let me show you that. I think that's the book of Isaiah, the 11th chapter, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, I could be wrong. Or is it Isaiah, the ninth chapter? Let's try Isaiah, the ninth chapter. Yeah, this is it. Isaiah, the ninth chapter, the sixth verse. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, or upon his shoulder. And that's talking about Yahweh Shai. That's another scripture in the Old Testament that speaks about the son. Okay, because there, there are those that say the presence of the Son is not in the Old Testament. They don't know how wrong they are. Okay, they don't, they err not knowing the Scriptures. Okay, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. These are the many titles our Lord has. Wonderful, Counselor, he's our Counselor on high, right? The Mighty Power. The, now, you notice the word God is not all in caps. The, the, the first letter is in caps, or is in a, uh, yeah, in caps, uh, is a capital letter, G, but the rest of it is lowercase, all right? If, if he was the Most High himself, all those letters would be in, in capitals, okay? They would, they would all be capital letters, okay? The, uh, the mighty power... The everlasting Father, again, the, the F is capital, but the rest is in lowercase. The Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. So why does he have the title, the Prince of Peace? Because he's our mediator. That's why. Let's read it again. Let's read it again. All right, the Prince of Peace, right? Uh, First Timothy two and five and then we're going to read the definition of a mediator again first timothy two and five it says for there is one power or one god and one mediator between god and men between the heavenly father and men right the man yahweh shai now even though the you have the capital g and the the lowercase letters we know according to that scripture, which shows you the limitation of the English language. We know according to the scripture who that God is talking about. It's talking about the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, the Most High Himself. Okay? Because Yahweh Shai is not a mediator between Himself. That don't make no sense. No, He's a mediator between us Israelites and the Heavenly Father that had cast us away as His people. And now He's accepting us back through Yahweh Shai. The, the, the sacrifice that Yahweh Shai did when he went on the cross, okay? When he went on the cross and gave his life, and then Yahweh raised him from the grave. By the way, it was Yahweh who raised him from the grave. He didn't raise himself. That's when Yahweh Shai became our mediator, okay? Yahweh Shai is indeed our mediator. Now, let's uh, read the definition of mediator again. Mediator. A person who attempts to make people involved in a conflict. What was the conflict? The Heavenly Father had cast us away as his people because of our wickedness. The main wickedness that we were doing was worshiping other gods. Okay, there's plenty of scriptures where the Heavenly Father had cast us away as his people. So that was the conflict. So there had to be a mediator. There had to be a go-between. There had to be a lawyer to plead our, our, our cause, our case. Guess who that lawyer is? Yahweh Shai. That's why he died on the cross. He didn't die on the cross for the whole world. He died on the cross for the Israelites who were given the laws, statutes, and commandments and broke them. And being the Lord's chosen people, there was a time the Lord said, no, you're not my, you're not, as a matter of fact, let's get Hosea. So people misunderstand this, the reason why Yahweh Shai died on the cross. Well, they call him Jesus Christ anyway. All right, let's let's uh, get the book of Hosea, because who are the Lord's people? The only people of the Lord are the Israelites. <laughs> Point blank, end of story. Okay, so when we were given those laws, the statutes and the commandments, 
which were basically given to us to excel us over the nations. Let's prove that real quick. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, beginning at the fifth verse. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my power commanded me. Who's the speaking? Moses. Another mediator, right? Moses was another one of our mediators. But the greatest mediator was Yahweh Shai. Anyway, and Moses even talked about Yahweh Shai being a mediator. When you go in Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter, right? Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter. All right. This is this. We have to bring the scripture out. Okay. Deuteronomy 18 chapter, the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet among the midst of thee, of thy brethren. And Yahweh Shai came out the tribe of Judah, right? Hebrews 7 and 14, right? Like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. See? So who's Moses talking about there? Moses was talking about Yahweh Shai, okay? Was the ultimate mediator. You know how you back that up you go to um, you go to the new testament john 1 john 1 and 45 let's read that it says philip findeth nathaniel and saith unto him we have found him of whom moses in the law and the prophets did write and we just read an example back in deuteronomy 18 uh yahweh of nazareth the son of joseph see so yahweh became our ultimate mediator just like moses was a mediator so if we go back to Deuteronomy 4, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my power commanded me, that you should do so in the land whither you go to possess it. Now, one of the main statute and judgment and law was not to worship other gods. We can read that in Exodus 20, where the Lord, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh said, I am, I am the Most High, you shall have no other gods before me. That's the very first commandment, roughly paraphrasing that scripture. That's the very first commandment, which we broke to the to uh, to the point of ad nauseum. Okay, <laughs> we broke that law to the point of ad nauseum, having other gods. It tells you in Jeremiah the second chapter, the the gods of uh, uh, Judah. Let's get it because I'm I'm about to butcher it. Jeremiah two and eleven. I have to make that point. Uh, it says, have a nation changed their gods? Remember, that was a violation of the first commandment. I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Us Israelites violated that, okay? That's why the Heavenly Father got so mad and cast us away as his people. We're going to read it. Have a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Yeah, they were worshiping other gods. So because we kept doing it, and forsook, forsook, that is, the laws, statutes, and commandments the Heavenly Father gave us. Let's read Deuteronomy 4 and 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, this is Moses speaking, our mediator, that ye should do so in the land whither you go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, which we did not do. That's why we got all these curses brought upon us as a nation. You can read about the curses in Deuteronomy the 28th chapter beginning at the, the 16th verse all the way down to the 68th verse, it says, Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, the other nations outside the nation of Israel. See? So we're above the nations, man. We're the Lord's special people. All right? Uh, this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statues and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. See? Now let's go from there to Deuteronomy 7. If that's not plain enough for you, those of you that are new to this, Deuteronomy 7 and 6, because you brothers that have been watching our videos, you, you know this stuff. You know, I'm preaching to the choir here. Hey. Uh, Deuteronomy 7 and 6, For thou art an unholy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto him. Let's look at that word special. Is, is, is everybody special? Well, the answer is no. Everybody's not special. Okay? We're going to get the definition of special. <laughs> like uh, Dana Carvey from uh, uh, Saturday Night uh, Live. Well, isn't that special? <laughs> that demon, Dana Carvey. He's, he's a pretty funny. He might, be, he might have been a Jake, man. He's a pretty funny dude. Anyway, here's the word special. 
Special. I said might have been a Jake. I'm not saying he was a Jake. You got guys who get offended, you know. Anyway, uh, better, greater, or otherwise different from what is usual. That's us Israelites, man. There ain't no people like us, man. We're the greatest people on the planet. If anything we do, we excel. Forget about it. Any any genre we take over, we, we eventually take it over. Okay? That's just, that's just the spirit the Heavenly Father gave us as being his chosen people. We're the liveliest people on the planet Earth too. Okay, we're the liveliest people you, you'll ever see, us Israelites. You can see it in our music and the way we dance. You can tell, look, there's a scripture where it says a city cannot be, a city on a hill cannot be hid. That's the city of Jerusalem. It can't be hid. So an Israelite cannot be hid. I don't care what, you could put an Israelite among the pygmies, all right? He's going to stand out. He, he, he or she is going to stand out. Even their children are going to stand out. That's just our spirit, man. We have, we, we, we're lively people. We, it tells you that in Exodus. The, 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 uh, the women of Egypt were not as lively as the women of Israel, the Israelite women. Clearly that's written in Exodus. You got so-called Negroes want to be Egyptian so bad. All right? They are not knowing the scriptures. But anyway, let's read the definition of special again. Better, greater, or otherwise different from what is usual. That says it all. Look at, look at the synonyms. Exceptional. All right? Particular. There's a scripture where it says the Lord's people are, are strange people. A peculiar people. That's us, man. Uh, unusual. All right? Remarkable. Outstanding. <laughs> Important. So what happened? What happened? <laughs> well, as being the Lord's chosen people, we started worshiping other gods. And the Lord brought us down. That's that's what happened. Deuteronomy 7 and 6, for the Lord, for thou, so like it, for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. That's why he gave us those laws, those statutes and those commandments, which elevated us over all the people, which made us the special people that we're supposed to be. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So don't believe the hype that all people are created equal. That's a goddamn lie. Okay, because while that was being said in slavery, Esau, Edom, which is the basis of all people, the scriptures tell us that, Esau, Edom had slaves. He had us as his slaves while he was going around saying that God created all people equal. You see the hypocrisy in that? And Esau, the top wicked elite of Esau, they know, man, they know that we're God's chosen people. And they know that we're better than them. That's why they, they have made a concerted effort to keep us down as a nation, man. To keep us back from knowing who we truly are. Because when our people wake up and find out who they truly are, then, then uh, they're going to behave as such. They're going to say, so we're, it's going to dawn on them that, oh, so we're better than everybody? Even the so-called white man who had us in slavery were better than him. So why is he ruling over us? And that's going to be the end of Esau's rulership. So it makes sense for Esau to keep us away from our true nationality. It benefits him. All right. Uh, Psalm 83. Psalm 83 and, uh, and uh, to prove that point, Psalm 83 and uh, start at one to get the whole thing. Keep not... Thou silence, O Yahweh, hold not thy peace and be not still, O Yahweh, which, he, which the Heavenly Father is not going to be still. He's not going to hold his peace. He speaks his peace through his prophets, okay, through his prophets. And that, and that takes us back to the, the, the title of the lesson, why works is so important. You know, we as being the, the Heavenly Father's prophets, we got the greatest work to do, man, to learn this knowledge, to learn this knowledge and keep it basic. You know, I've been... Um, I've been told that I'm a very basic teacher, and I love it, man. At first, you know, I got a little mad. I said, what? Because I've been doing this so long. But then I thought about it. I said, that's actually a compliment. That's, that, that, that is the way you want to be. You want to be a basic teacher. <laughs> you know, because this truth is so deep that you want to keep it basic. You don't, you don't want to you don't wanna go over the people's heads. The, the people that we're talking to, our people inherently, are foolish people. 
Sodish children. The scriptures tell us that, Jeremiah 4 and 22. So you can't come deeper than deep in front of them. You're going to lose them. You got to keep it basic. So for the guy who said, by the way, um, uh, that's the guy, right? Well, he came under a different name. He got so many YouTube names. Uh, the, the first name he came under was Jake Paul is an Israelite. He's, he's the resident scoffing monkey, you know? <laughs> now he came under uh, underneath this name, Midget Castiglione, right? <laughs> so obviously the guy got issues. He got mental problems, you know? He really should take his meds, you know? But anyway, um, and the greatest medicine is just knowledge, just truth. But some guys, truth be told, some guys were set up to be scoffers and scorners. They can't help themselves. You know, you go in the book of Proverbs, the first chapter, it says, the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. Guess what? There's certain individuals, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His Son, Yahweh Shai, have set up to be scoffers and scorners who don't have the mental capacity to get this knowledge, to comprehend this knowledge. So they're reduced to being a scoffer and a scorner. See? So check that out, man. The Heavenly Father, well, as it is written, the Heavenly Father brought in the good as well as the bad. Go, goes back to that parable that Yahweh Shai taught about the net being cast into the sea. The net is are these scriptures, the Bible, being cast into the sea by us that go out and teach. And then the net, just like a, a ordinary net brings in fish, that's how they fish back then, and they still do it now, they use the net to fish. Well, the spiritual net is bringing in all kind of fish. Now there's some fish that, that you can eat according to the law, and there's fish that you can't eat. You throw it back into the ocean. So that's these guys, man. These scoffers and scorners are fish you can't eat. All right? You throw, you, they're going to be thrown right back into the ocean. Okay? So, Psalm 83 and 2. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. And it's going to tell you who those enemies are. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. And that's why wherever our people go, they're not accepted. You know, earlier I was watching, um, who was I watching? Um, I was watching Elder Tazai one from the main camp and uh, Elder Tazadakbar and Elder Ayatun. They were doing a live show and I was watching it earlier. And um, Elder Tazai one was going in on how, you know, you got the so-called Negroes, so-called black men everywhere they go the natives of the land, the natives of, like, let's say they go to China, the natives tell them, oh, we don't want no nigger here, get out, go home. You know, the so-called Chinese. Or over there in the Ukraine, uh, you had the Ukrainians were telling so-called blacks to get out, go home, go back to your land, why are you here? So, you know, these are enemies that have lifted up their head. They're behaving proud against us, okay? For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up their head. Yeah, against the Lord's people, beginning with the so-called Negroes all the way down to the so-called Mexicans. All right, the 12 tribes, if you will. And you got Israelites that are scattered among the different nations, okay? You even got Israelites scattered among the Chinese, the Japanese, all nations. And we teach this, okay? We also teach that not every Israelite is going to look like a so-called black man. You're going to have Israelites looking like the different nations where they were scattered. We teach this, okay? And that's, and that's according to the Bible. It says, They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Right, our true nationality is hidden to the world. But through this knowledge, through this truth, our true nationality is coming out. People are finding out more and more that we're, that we're the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. A lot of people ain't trying to hear it. They don't want to hear it. They keep telling us that we're African you know, guys like Vocab and, and guys that follow him and say, no, you ain't no Israelite. You're an African, you know, but we're not Africans. Matter of fact, they don't even know where the word Africa comes from. Came from a so-called white man, Leo Scipio Africanus. We didn't come out of his family line, so there's no goddamn way we could be African. Matter of fact, before Africa, that plot of land was called the land of Ham. I can actually read that in the Psalms, Psalm 105. It wasn't called Africa. Okay, and, and that's not our origin. Our origin is is uh, the land of Israel. All right, our origin is Jerusalem, Palestine, man. That's where we came from. Okay, uh, Psalm one hundred five and twenty three, I believe it is. Is it 
some way. Yeah, Israel also came into Egypt, right? That's part of our history. We came into Egypt as slaves, right? Well, at first we came and we were free during the time of Jacob and the 70 souls, but then later we were put in, we were put in slavery by the Egyptians who hated us. They were jealous of us because we were better than them. So eventually they rose up and put us in slavery, all right? Israel also came into Egypt and Jacob, there it goes, Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. There you go. So it wasn't called no Africa. It was called the land of Ham. All right. Um, so back to Psalm 83 and 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. That's us. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be, in, may be no more in remembrance. Right. The people that are being called Israelites today, well, not Israelites, but is, they call themselves Israeli or Jewish. They're not the real Jews. Okay, the term Jew goes back to Judah, one of the tribes of the, of the nation of Israel. And it ain't just the Jews. It's all 12 tribes that's going to be raised up as a nation. So this whole Jewish, it's all, it's all nonsense. The, the Bible talks about the nation of Israel being uplifted. And that's all 12 tribes. Okay. Ain't just the so ain't just the Jews, which the, the the majority of people that call themselves Jews, they're not the real Jews. But that's another video for another time. Anyway, they have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance, for they have consulted together with one consent, they are confederate against thee. That's why they hate us, all the other nations. They tell us get out get out of their land and they they insult us and they uh you know, they do all kind of wickedness to us, all right? Well, they hate us. We're reading it here. Then it gives you the nations. It says the tabernacles of Edom. It starts off with them. There you go. So now you know why you're hated all over the world, man. And at the same time, you're, <laughs> people want to be us, like the so-called black man. He's hated all over the world, but at the same time, everybody wants to be like him. Everyone, everyone wants to talk like him, dress like him, have his swag, you know? <laughs> it's amazing, man. But once again, we're the Lord's chosen people and we're lively people. There's a scripture where it says we are lively stones. There's also another scripture where it says we're the salt of the earth. That's us. But at the same time, the people of the earth, the majority of the nations of the earth hate us. All right. The only time they like us is when it comes time to entertain them. That's all we're good for, entertainment, because we're the best dancers. We're the best singers. You know, we make the best music. Anyway, Deuteronomy 7 and 6, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So there it is. So now, what happened? What happened to us? Well, we were cast away as the Lord's people, and that's why they had to be a mediator. Now you know why Yahweh Shai went on the cross and who he died for. He died for the nation of Israel. That's what. That's the, the sacrifice that the Heavenly Father required for us once again to be his chosen people, okay? And that's the real truth. Hosea, the first chapter, and uh, I want to get to the point. Uh, let's just, yeah, Hosea 1 and 8. Now, the backstory is Hosea had to have sex with this harlot and actually had children by that harlot, and the children represented uh, the children represented something, all right? We're going to read it. Uh, Hosea 1 and 8. Now, when she had weaned Loruhama, she conceived and bare a son. Uh, now, Loruhama means not having mercy, okay? Loruhama means not having mercy. All right, matter of fact, let's take a look at there you go. Laruhama in the Hebrew, no mercy. Right? So the Lord would not have mercy on us as his people back then. Now the Lord have mercy through Yahweh Shai. Again, that's why he had to go on the cross and die on the cross for us. He was our symbol of mercy, Yahweh Shai. Now you see how important his job was going on that cross. You got a lot of these wacky tacky Christians, they have no idea why Yahweh Shai went on the cross. They'll just tell you, oh, he died for our sins. <laughs> but but who is the only nation that can sin? 
the nation of Israel because sin, what is, what is the definition of sin? According to 1 John 3, that's an, another um, answer that wacky tacky Christians can't give you. A plausible answer when you ask them, well, what does sin mean? All right, what is the definition of sin? Let's read it. 1 John 3 and 4, it says, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Now, who was the law given to? The law was only given to the Israelites. Okay, um, Psalms, let's get Psalms 78 and 5. So only they could really sin, which is transgression of the law. Psalm 78, that's why we got the greatest punishment. All those curses, man. Psalm 78 and 5, for he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law. That's the same law we read about in Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. Appointed a law in Israel. See? Appointed a law in Israel among the Israelites, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. See? Let's get the same book, Psalm 148. This has turned out to be a basic lesson, but that's all right. I like, I like to be basic. All right? <laughs> Psalm 148. I'm sorry. Psalm 147, 19 and 20. All right, it says, He showeth his word unto Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. I mean, that's plain. How you get around that? So it's all, it's all about the Israelites, man. So what happened? The Lord cast us away as his chosen people. We're going we're gonna to read it back in Hosea. Hosea 1 and 8. Now, when she had weaned, who's the she? The, the harlot that Hosea had sex with. He actually uh, was told to hire that woman to be his wife for a period of time. And he, had, he actually he had children by this woman. Okay. Now, when she had weaned Loruhamah, because why did the Lord told Hosea to hire a harlot to have sex with her and have children with her? Because that's what the nation of Israel, spiritually, that's what they became. They became harlots. We started worshiping other gods. See, the scriptures say that we are married unto the Heavenly Father. All right, let's get Jeremiah 3 and 14. Now, the same way a woman who's married to a man, if she would have sex with another man behind her husband's back, she have just committed adultery and she becomes a harlot. Well, that's what happened with the nation of Israel spiritually. When we started worshiping other gods, we committed adultery and we became a harlot. Okay? This is Jeremiah 3 and 14. It says, Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you. Who's the black backsliding children? The Israelites, all 12 tribes. The Lord said he's married unto us. Check that out. So we're his woman. We're his bride. And I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Yeah, starting with the elect. Okay, that's how the elect of the nation of Israel is going to come back. Okay, because it starts with the, the nation being brought back to the Father through Yahweh's death and resurrection. It's starting with the elect, the chosen elect, which is a very few. All right, and the rest of the nation of Israel will be in the kingdom as children of the elect. Okay, that's why we always talk about the elect, the elect, the elect. As a matter of fact, when Yahweh Shai comes, who is he going to gather? His elect. There you go. So, the elect of the nation of Israel. So, again, Hosea 1 and 9. Then said the Heavenly Father, call his name Lo... Well, let's read 8 again. Now, when she had weaned Loruhamah, she conceived and bare a son. So, you had a girl and a boy, right? Then said Yahweh call his name Lo Ami. Now, Lo Ami means not my people. For ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. And why is that? Because the Heavenly Father got pissed off because of us worshiping other gods. So he cast us away as being his people, and he said he won't have no mercy on us. And for a long time, he didn't have no mercy on us till Yahweh Shai stepped in and became the supreme sacrifice. Because the Heavenly Father said, I cannot forget my people. Uh, let me see if I can get. Uh, all right, bear with me for a second. I want to I get that scripture. Here it is right here. 
Barakatai Ha'abar Shem Yahashai, which is ancient Hebrew for bless the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Isaiah 49 and 15. Well, uh, let me start it. Oh, There's some good stuff here. Isaiah 49 and 13. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord hath comforted His people. Who are His people? The Israelites. How has He comforted us? By giving us this knowledge, this truth, by waking us up to what's really going on and why we're in this condition and how we're going to get out of this condition and how we're going to be rewarded, all right? And how we're going to be put back on top where we belong. Yeah, all of that is comfort to us, man. That's why the Bible is known as what? The comforter. Is it meant to comfort everybody on the planet? Earth? No, it's only meant to comfort the Israelites, man. Okay, clearly you're seeing this. If, you, if you're following with understanding. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains, for the Lord hath comforted his people and will have mercy upon his afflicted. Now, back in Hosea, we just read how the Lord got so pissed off. He said, you're not going to be my people. I'm not going to have mercy on you. And he caused Hosea, which was an Israelite, to have sex with that prostitute and bring forth their children, which represented that. But now, the, back in Isaiah, it's, he's saying this, For the Lord hath comforted his people and will have mercy upon his afflicted. And is that being fulfilled right now? Oh yeah. Because we're getting this knowledge, we're getting this truth. We're the afflicted ones. We're the ones that need comfort. All the other nations, they're really in their glory. We're the ones on the bottom, beginning with the so-called black man. I mean, come on. But Zion said, The Lord hath forsaken me and my Lord have forgotten me. See? <laughs> Can a woman forget her sucking child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget. And it's true. A woman can actually forget her own children. You know, put them in the garbage can, uh, put them in the oven. This is the same child that came from between her feet. Women can actually do that. That's why the scriptures say from, from uh, all wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. A woman can actually put a child in the oven. Okay, but the Heavenly Father said this, Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. So no matter how pissed off we made the Heavenly Father, he never forgot us as his chosen people. And what proves that is the sacrifice that Yahweh Shai did on the cross, bringing us back to the Heavenly Father. Hence the title, Prince of Peace. Okay, it says, Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. So the Heavenly Father never forgot his people. So this is what's happening now. We're in the time period of the Heavenly Father calling back his people, beginning with the elect of the nation of Israel. And he's about to make us great again, even greater than we were before we fell as his people. Kind of reminds you of Job, which Job was an Israelite, right? You know, Job had all those riches and then Job was plagued, right? He lost everything he had, but then towards the end, he got back everything he had and then some. Well, that represents the nation of Israel, man. That's what's going to happen to us. Okay? And then as you read on, the ninth verse, Then said the Heavenly Father, Call his name lo Ami, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your power or your God. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which they are now, which cannot be measured nor numbered, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. Why? Because the Heavenly Father had cast us away. There's another scripture where it says we lost our identity, our nationality to those other nations that conquered us, namely the nation of Edom. They took our nationality, took our, took our identity. We discontinued from our heritage. That's Jeremiah 17 and 4. That's why it was said unto us, you're not my people. Yeah, you're Africans. You're this, you're that. You're anything but Israelites. That's what vocab says, right? Vocab says we're anybody but Israelites. We can't be Israelites. <laughs> uh, uh, that in the place where it was said you're unto them, you're not my people, that main place being here in America, there it shall be said unto them, you are the sons of the living God. Who are the sons of the living God? Everybody? Nope. The Israelites. So we're fulfilling that prophecy. And again, it takes me back to the title of this video, The Works. Now you see how important the works are of waking our people up, man, telling them who they are, 
That's the main part of our message, to tell our people who they are. You're no more Negroes, you're no more Puerto Ricans, you're no more Mexicans. You are the, you are the lost tribes of the nation of Israel. You are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. And the reason why all this curses happened to you it goes back to the Bible. Okay? So basically, the works are important, man. The works are important. And what I was going to go into, but I'm pretty much going to end the video there, was the fact that these scoffers and scorners do not have any works. Okay, because I asked this guy, everybody was getting on this guy, this, this guy, Midget <laughs> Castiglione, which he has a thousand and one names. Okay, this bug out, somebody. <laughs> Let me be honest, you're not doing any lessons at all, so that makes you a complete bug out. Now, I suspect that this guy, he might be part of a different camp and he, he might actually go out and speak or, or he may actually do the work. Apostle Tar thinks he's a I, I thun, the tallest guy in IUIC. That's who Apostle Tar thinks he is. But um, if that's the case, why is he hiding? Why is he, why is he hiding behind these, these different YouTube names? Okay? Because the guy's a reprobate, that's why. But he has no works. And I ask him a question, I say, prove, he's talking all this shit about me, calling me basic. Now I replied, hey, I said, uh, I, look, got no problem with being basic. I was replying to his comment here, which he said this, well, let me just read it so it makes sense. I was implying that this was a, con I, I was not implying, so like it, let me read that again. I was not implying, by the way, he spelled implying wrong. He doesn't have an E, it has an I. I was not implying that this was a competition. Yes, he was. Because he was saying that of all the teachers, I'm the most basic. I'm not in the spirit, blah, 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 blah. As if I'm trying to compete with the other elders and apostles. <laughs> well, now, now, you, now you know you made a grave mistake in saying that. I was not implying that this was a competition. Let me be honest. <laughs> oh boy, let him be honest. I have noticed that in the spirit that Apostle Tar's go-to man is Apostle Ramla. Well, that's the spirit. You know? <laughs> and the phone had to chime on that one. <laughs> so maybe that is the spirit. Hey, if that's if that's the case, that's, that's beautiful. I have seen Apostle Ramla go from... Because I came in the truth bef way before Apostle Ramla. I had three years in, in the truth before Apostle Ramla came in. All right? About three years. And I've seen him grown tremendously in the spirit, man. I mean, that brother, Apostle Elder Ramlav, he, he endured some serious demons, man, plaguing his mind. And through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yashai, he overcame those demons. And now look at him now, you know, so all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yashai, and that's the truth. So if he's Apostle Tar's go-to man, then that's a blessing. I'm happy for the brother. <laughs> Let me stop. <laughs> Inside joke. Uh, anyway, uh, going back to the comment, uh, Apostle, Apostle Tar's go-to man is Apostle Ram. I'm okay. Why might that be? I don't know. You tell me, my, my, my dude. You seem to have uh, a clearer insight in these things more than I do. Maybe I'm not as deep as, as I should. Well, you've already said I'm not as deep as I should be, so there you go. Why might that be? And I'm not turning you guys against one another. That's exactly what you're doing. And the scriptures speak about that. Uh, so discord among brethren this is one of the things the Heavenly Father hates, right? Not at all. I'm just stating the facts. Yeah, okay. According to you, they're the facts. And you're not studious. Okay. You have not developed in the spirit. Okay. Mind you, I've been in this thing more than 30 years and counting, but that's all right. You, you're you peaked. Okay. Uh, says you. Now, can you enhance your knowledge? Absolutely. <laughs> but you refuse to. No, I, li I like to be basic. I, I like, I like, I am happy being basic. Now, can you enhance your knowledge? Absolutely, but you refuse to, and you'd rather be basic and am amateurish. Okay. Which is why you justify your unskillfulness. Okay. So he said all that garbage, right? So even before I could even reply to him, the brother GMS Debar Kabosh said, let me be honest. You're not doing any lessons at all, so that makes you a complete bug out, which is true. This guy ain't got no lessons, at least no lessons he wants to show us, because maybe that will reveal his identity. 
he, he is terrified of his identity being revealed. And we could easily find out who this clown is. That's the thing. Which shows you that these guys got demons on them, man. Like we couldn't find out who the hell this guy is. Come on, but we don't, we don't care. We, we understand that scoffers and scorners are an integral part of this ministry. That word integral means the whole thing. We got the good as well as the bad. The scriptures tell us this. So we're not, we're not messed up by vermin that happen to stumble into the truth. They're supposed to be there. All right? The Lord chose the good as well as the bad. Okay? And he going to make examples out of the bad for the good. All right? Uh, so I replied to that, 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 uh, that bug out. I replied to him, well, got no problem with being basic. Only person who seems to be bothered by one being basic is you and your many YouTube names. And as you can see, 11 people thumbed that up. Another thing these guys do, they're so lame, they thumb up their own comments. I mean, how, how lame can you get? You so lousy, you so lame, you need crutches, right? You so lame that you thumb up your own comment. <laughs> That's another thing these guys do. These losers, these scoffers and scorners. So he came back with this, Tahar should strip you of your rank, you're unskillful and, and lack. Well, why would Apostle Elder Tahar strip me of my rank when I'm doing the work? I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I mean, anyway, let's move on. So I came back with this. Well, speaking of being unskilled and lacking, where are your videos of edification? Just show me one. All I wanted to see was just one video of this moron speaking whether he shows his, his face or not, speaking and trying to edify the Lord's people. Like Yahweh Shai told Peter, if you love me, feed my lambs and feed my sheep. Obviously, this guy does, doesn't love Yahweh Shai because if he did, he would feed the lambs and the sheep, right? And let's say, really, let's say he is out there teaching. He's one of those guys in the other camps. He's afraid to reveal who he is. Why? Wait a minute. Is it not written, thine eyes shall see thy teachers? Right? Isaiah 30 and 20. So why is this guy afraid? Why is he hiding behind these different YouTube names? It's obvious the guy got problems, man. But he was chosen to be a scoffer and a scorner. That's his lot. We all got our lot in this thing of ours. There you go. Speaking of being unskilled and lacking, where are your videos of edification? Just show me one. <laughs> so uh, Elder Yashwamba came back with this. Uh, he put a comment, he said, he can do a lesson edifying the other scoffers, because <laughs> it's a well-known fact this guy's a scoffer, right? This guy, Midget Castiglione, with the many different names he got. He can do a lesson edifying the other scoffers how to make more dummy pages to scoff. <laughs> a dummy making dummy pages. These are grown men. <laughs> yeah, well, I know seven-year-olds who are more mature. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, give that a thumbs up. And then another guy came only for the elect. And let me be honest, you have an effeminate disposition about you, scoff boogie. They get, they're all getting on this, this clown that made the comment to me. So that's the spirit, man. I, didn't even, I don't even have to defend myself. How about Shemi Shai have prepared men that are being edified by us to reply to these scoffing clowns, you know? And let me be honest, you have an effeminate disposition about you, scoff boogie. <laughs> if you studied the scriptures as much as you studied grown men re relationships, you wouldn't be up here sounding like Steve Wilkos instead of one of the apostles. Go study and repent from your wicked ways. The missiles is hot. Yes, they are. And even my man, I, I'm a one eye bud, which he does good videos. I watch his videos. He said, where are your daily le lessons of edification and exhortation? Go away. Yeah, exactly. So that's what prompted me to do this video, the importance of the works. Remember what Yahweh Shai said? He said, believe me for the very work's sake. And I, I don't know if I read that scripture, but if I didn't, let's, let's go get it. Because initially, that's what I wanted to bring out. John 14. And I believe I did read it, but I'll read it again. John 14, uh, uh, John 14 and 9, Yahweh I said unto him, Have I been so long time with you? Yes, I did read it. And yet thou hast not known me, Philip. He that have seen me have seen the Father, and how sayest thou, show, thou then showest the Father. Believe thou not, believest thou not, that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, like us. 
but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. The same thing with us. We do the works by the Father. Then it goes on to say, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. There you go. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. See? So the point is the works are very important. The works show that we are of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai and we actually believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahshai because we do in the works. What did James say? James 2 and 18, it says, uh, well, let me start at 17. Even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead, being alone, right? Because you could say you have faith, but if you don't have the works, then your, your faith is really not justified because you don't have the works to back up your faith. Yeah, man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. So we're showing our, beginning fellow apostle and down, we're showing our faith, brothers, because we got the works to back it up. All right, we got our videos, we got, we've done tons and tons of videos, edifying videos, and I make it a point to be edifying, okay, on my channel. That's why I call it daily edification exhortation. I believe in ed edification and exhortation, or else what's the point, you know? I want you brothers, when you come to my channel, I want you to be edified and exhorted. That's the point. That's the goal of this ministry. All right. Not to put on a, you know, a phony, phony baloney show and do all that other stuff you see these other guys doing, which is super, superfluous or superfluous. It's unnecessary. I just get right to the point, man. You brothers be edified and exhorted. Job's done. Okay. Move on to the next guy. All right, that being said, hopefully you're edified. Next video.